Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Forest of Squirrel Clan. Which are looking a little bit chilly and woebegone right now, almost as though some sort of wonderful force of life has somewhat neglected it for a week and, uh, you know, not been here to, to make sure that seasons pass and moons go on and eventually our cats will be able to enjoy the wonders of spring and actual squirrels being in a forest that looks like a forest again. Um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I did not mean to disappear from our Squirrel Clan adventures for that long. We just had some very interesting and wonderful things happening in my family that required kind of like a life asterisk pivot. However, I can promise you guys that behind the scenes, I have been absolutely ecstatic for all of the Squirrel Clan excitement and excitement about some of our future cat clans in our Patreon Discord, which has been so freaking kind. And also, I wanted to just say upfront right away that maybe I have indeed heard some rumors about potatoes. And if, for those of you guys who get the reference, I just want to say, isn't it wonderful to respect the people who put so much work into creating this free for everyone to enjoy? I can say with an unfortunate degree of confidence that I am actually probably a lot older than many of you and have been part of the communities that get built around game fandoms for as long as I can remember. I grew up learning how to type by joining Harvest Moon form role plays, for instance, and I know how much work a passion project like this takes, not even on this scale, but having run smaller scale things myself and only having the reward of being passionate and excited about it, now at least when I create the things I'm passionate about, it feeds me! Yay YouTube! But for the people who create the Warrior Cats Clan Generator game, that's not the case. It's completely done out of love. And I think the very, 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 very least that we could do for all of them is a lot of respect for making sure that perhaps potatoes stay in the pantry they're supposed to be in until they are released when the gardener is ready, to use metaphors. <laughs> and for all of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm just saying that it is very kind to be respectful to creators and perhaps not leak things until they are ready for them to be shared. It can really take the wind out of your sails. It's kind of like somebody spoiling an entire birthday <laughs> that you worked so hard, like a surprise birthday uh, like party, and you like worked really hard for weeks and months to make it really awesome for somebody you cared about. And then like some other person just walks in and takes a bunch of pictures with their phone and walks up to the person whose birthday it is. And they're like, hey, look at this. What do you think? Like, I, I don't think they got the flavor of that cake right. What do you think? <laughs> like, that's how it feels. So don't do that, please. Uh, at least that's just what this one of many, many, many members of our, um, I did not forget what we, Star Pelt! There we go, Star Pelt! <laughs> uh, Star Pelt creators watching over Star Clan, watching over Warrior Cats clans. This is beginning to sound a little bit metaphorical to the extreme. I should probably pull myself out. Somebody give me an escape rope. <clears throat> anyway, that's just what I think. So moving on, thank you guys again for your patience. It was just a really interesting and fun week with family secrets just going on. Some great changes for my family that make me ecstatic and happy and so thrilled that I may finally be able to live the fairy tale life with my husband that I've always wanted. But you guys are not here to listen to me ramble about my love of my husband Chips. Instead, you're here for the kitty drama. And friends, your patience has been rewarded because oh my gosh. <laughs> Do we have some kitty drama, including the fact that it is finally time to find out the fate of the abandoned kits under that cabin that I put in all of your guys' hands. So we're going to be rolling the new random generator I made for that in just a moment, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and just remind you guys what happened. Pepperkit died, unfortunately, and it has really destroyed Autumn for a sense of trust in both Prance Tail and in Bloom Coral, who she feels had a strong hand in Peppercat dying since Prance Tail and Bloom Coral playing out outside the nursery while Prance Tail had, you know, had green cough is what ended up getting Peppercat sick and you can see how one thing led to another and a grieving mother would need somewhere to put her emotions. 
So I spent quite a long time going through and tweaking a whole bunch of the relationships for our cats behind the scenes. And just to show you guys, yes, I was actually working really hard behind the scenes. Behold this. <laughs> So uh, this is actually pretty interesting. It's something that I might start linking some of you guys to, but it is an Excel sheet tracking all of our warrior cats. Wow, doesn't that sound fascinating? I think I have only interested a small segment of us, but those of us into random generators tend to be into these kinds of trackers and things. And uh, yeah, we can actually see now at a glance, and I'll be able to share this easily with you guys in the future, how old all of the cats in the clan are, what personalities they have, their skills, any of the experience they have, who their mentor was, their family members, and I edited this very, very carefully, who their current best friend and friend, disliked cat, potential, ah, okay, there's enemy in here, but like nobody has any real enemies at the moment. Even though Autumn Fur is grieving, I wouldn't go so far as to say she feels that she has enemies right now. But we also have uh, cats who have accessories. Oh, I forgot to put Honey. Honey. Oh, hang in there, Honey Wing. Okay, Honey Wing is actually supposed to have her little collar. Eh. There we go. She has a green collar. And I will be putting in some fun accessories and other things for our cats uh, as time goes on. And I start adding even more ways for our cats to potentially get their own you know, tiny little pets like adorable little beetles or something like that, or fireflies or butterflies, I don't know. Just don't listen to Siri. She's just been mm, working very hard and poking around inside of the warrior cat uh, clan gen files. And then we also have a small section for the quick RP notes. So I'll make this available to you guys now. It's not the main page where I'm going to be able to have you guys keep up with all of the cats. That's actually this one. <laughs> So this is the main thing that I will link you guys to in the future. I decided it's just been so long working on this. Why make you like wait any longer? I want to show that it's not done at all. It's not even started. But we do have a Millinotes website where you guys will be able to go so that you can kind of catch up on links to the current episodes, the playlist, list of the cats, linked to their profiles so that you can find out more about them, see notable episodes, any fan art that's been made about them. Speaking of fan art, we do actually have a fan art gallery and eventually like all of these little footnotes that I made to myself will be filled out and this will be a beautiful page where you can very quickly catch up on Squirrel Clan and then, you know, in the future, keep up with the drama that's going on. So if you don't remember who is who or why things at this moment are dramatic in a certain way, you can take a little peek here, get a good summary, and maybe even bask in the beautiful fan art that has been made. <laughs> so this again has not been tweaked, has not been organized. We actually have a really cute mascot that my artist Alari and I actually created to start showcasing fan art for all of our series. But this is where you can see at a glance, um, and I'm gonna edit it so that hopefully I can get like everybody, everybody who sent it in and all of the credit to the right people. Uh, but this is just, I decided it would just be good to go ahead and like show you guys that this exists. <laughs> So you know that I meant it when I said I'm working on stuff. I am working on stuff in the background. Oh, Honey Wing. Oh, and her daughter Primrose. Oh gosh, we're going to get back to them in just a second. But yes, so that is uh, what I've been working on in the background. It is indeed uh, happening. And it has also helped us to realize some really interesting things about the cats of our clan. Like the fact that actually... We have um, quite the distribution of how old some of the cats are. And it also allowed me to see who everybody likes the most. So just before we dive back in, I'm going to show you guys. If we come over here and we kind of like sort the column, you can see that Plum Kit has two people who consider her best friend and that Tangle Spring has three and Time Fawn has two who like him so much that they feel completely comfortable and secure with him. Uh, which is kind of fun. So Tangle Spring, let's see, I want to make sure I get who likes her the most right. It's just so small because I have to make the screen small for recording. So Flood Fern, Prancetail, and Bloom Coral all consider Tangle Spring to be their best friend. Tangle Spring considers Pounce Bush to be her best friend, so the deputy, which I find quite fun. And then Time Fawn makes two cats feel very secure, 
He makes Pounce Bush the deputy, possibly feel pretty secure in his position, and Eddie Leaf, who he did kind of take over as the mentor for once or twice when his mate Autumn Fur was busy in the Medicine Cat Den. So you can do really fun things like that where you can go ahead and sort by who's 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 best friend. Actually, I haven't sorted yet to see like who is the cat that just everybody everybody likes the most. Let me see. So if we come here and then I go ahead and oh dear. All right, fine. Oh, you know what? Just come over here and then sort. So Bloom Coral is considered to be a lot of people's friends. Eddie Leaf is pretty friendly. And look at Flood Tuft. Flood Tuft and Time Fawn actually are considered to, um, huh. There we go. Uh, there we go. But yeah, Flood Tuft and Time Fawn, or Time Fawn, <laughs> sorry about that. Time Fawn are considered to be like the most popular cats for cats that like them in the entire clan, which I thought was interesting. And as far as who is the most disliked, let's actually go ahead and sort that. Oh my gosh, for crying out loud, why did I have to make this so big? Let's make it smaller, there we go. But for who is the most eh, disliked, we have Autumn Fur and Prance Tail. So Autumn Fur, um, like apparently, Honeywing and Bloom Coral don't really like Autumn Fur very much. Um, and it looks like Prance Tail. <laughs> uh, yeah, Prance Tail is very much not liked by, um, by Autumn Fur. And Tangle Spring also doesn't really like Prance Tail a lot. She does consider Prance Tail a friend, but she also doesn't like Prance Tail because Prance Tail causes so much trouble. So that will be really fun. I think it's great. It's easy. It's going to be fantastic when we start getting more and more cats. And it's gonna be a lot more fun to look at once I put all of the pretty pictures over here of all of our kitty cats. And speaking of pretty pictures, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Vindance, who actually created, oh my gosh, you can't really see it very well, but who created the Squirrel Clan icon and this beautiful Squirrel Clan fan art. It's so beautiful and amazing, and I'm so excited to use custom icons for all of our future clans. This is awesome. Uh, thank you very much to our wonderful patron, Vindance, for this. And don't worry, other wonderful patrons, you guys will be seeing your fan art pop up soon too. So, now that we have got all of the administrative boring bits out of the way, let's go ahead and check back in on our cats. Boom. So we're beginning our adventures here on <clears throat> One second. Here on Moon 10, which I could have sworn- Ah, I changed all the cats! Oh, well. <laughs> all right, Star Clan, we're gonna have to go ahead and pivot with this. Uh, but, cough, cough, I guess we'll start this way then. But we are beginning our adventures today with quite- Oh, whoa, this is actually pretty dramatic. With quite the interesting development, because uh, you can see Moon Tuft, the disgraced deputy, who has only recently arrived into the clan with a bite mark that was so severe he needed to be in the medicine den, but he wouldn't tell anybody about where he got it from, continues to try to curry favor among some of the younger members of the clan, like Eddie Leaf and Primrose Paw, and also one of the members of the clan who's kind of a little ostracized right now, but generally liked by everyone, and that is Bloom Coral. So yeah, Moon Tuft, what are you up to in there? I didn't even plan that, but there you are, doing stuff. He is strange and he is quite ambitious. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna try to go ahead and potentially take the place of deputy, but trying to reassure himself that no, no, he doesn't need to worry about, you know, this new cat, Moon Tuft, taking his place as deputy. Uh, Pounce Bush seems to be here in the, the leader's den with Chestnut Star and autumn fur i can only imagine that autumn fur is getting condolences and a lot of support for her grieving from chestnut star who has only recently really 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 begun to understand how deeply the chestnut star herself wants a family and then via heart is in the medicine den as always <laughs> Poor Via Heart with Flood Fern. I feel like Via Heart just ends up living here, which is just sad. <sighs> but Via Heart is in the medicine den right now. And it looks like Prance Tail and Flood Tuft are hanging out for a second. Probably nothing special. I can't remember if Flood Tuft really thinks anything of Prance Tail or vice versa. We can check in a second. Um, but I have a feeling that's probably just about patrols. And then I do feel that Tangle Spring, who cares deeply for Time Fawn, and Time Fawn, who considers Tangle Spring a friend, are perhaps consoling one another over the loss of Pepper Kit. And speaking of kits, 
It looks like Honeywing is actually searching around inside of the nursery for her daughter, who of course wouldn't be there. She's a paw now, Honeywing. <laughs> And I feel like Honeywing is still a little, a little like, oh, they grow up so fast. Like, to be fair, Honeywing only had her, her adopted kit for like two moons before she was an apprentice, but still. But all right, so that is where the lie of the land currently is. And we're going to go ahead and see how all of our cats are today and what they're thinking. And as we go through, I'll show you guys how their relationships have really changed. Chestnut Star is currently relaxing in camp probably gathering up her strength and her energy before she heads out into the snowy forest with her thoughts filled with wondering what happened to the fate of those young kits who were abandoned under the human cabin deep in the forest, or excuse me, <laughs> the two leg cabin deep in the forest. So I wonder who she would take with her. Maybe whoever she trusts the most at the, the moment, or hmm, Houndsbush and Moontuft both have a a reason to want to be going with her. Hmm. Also, Floodfern, I feel like he really wants to to try to patch things up with Chestnut Star because they've really kind of been butting heads, but he just wouldn't have time. There's not enough medicine in the medicine cat den, and he's got a lot of sick cats in there right now. So Chestnut Star, relaxing in camp. Oh, Poundsbush. Houndsbush wishes he could visit Pepper Kit and Star Clan. Oh. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Is that why he's with Autumnfur? He he's responsible and like a good hunter and stuff, but I I he really does. Poundsbush has such a a a open heart, doesn't he? He really seems to care so much about all of the cats of the clan. Speaking of which, how is his crush on yeah, his crush on Prancedale is still pretty high. See, he he's one of the cats who actually relies a lot on Time Fawn and likes him a lot. Wow. I wonder if he 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 misses Kits right now though. Would he go and harass Floodfern again? <laughs> to be like, Floodfern, is there any way that you could talk to Pepper Kit and Star Clan to maybe to maybe reassure Autumn Fur that she's alright? Oh, and speaking of Pepper Kit and Star Clan. Friends, I do think we're going to have to go ahead and add in a very special condition where our young Pepper Kit just may run into none other than her actual birth mother, Alder. And maybe I really wonder if, uh, if Pepper Kit might discover, oh, Alder's actually her birth mother. And I wonder what Pepper Kit would do about that. I think we might have to have some sort of random generator done. And Pepper Kit, oh, she's relaxing in the sun. Don't worry, don't worry. Autumn for time fun. Your little one's okay. Also older. Like, you care about that. That's a bunch of drama in one kitten. Oh my gosh. Wah. All right. So let's go ahead and see. Oh, Floodfern. Oh, wants to get to know Honeywing better. Aw. Well, okay. I'm going to go ahead and anytime a cat says they want to get to know another cat better, I'm going to go ahead and either use a mediator like that day or we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start a new random generator for relationship boost just because two mediators in the clan doesn't seem to be moving the relationships quite as fast as I want, but that's probably my own fault because I move at the speed of a snail going backwards on this, but still I'm having a good time. <laughs> how how well does he know Honeyfern right now actually? Or Honeywing, pardon me. Oh dear. Did I just say a ship name? That that shouldn't have happened. Like, I honestly don't even ship them. Um, Honeywing, he likes her a little bit. I guess he just wants to get her to know her better, which is nice. Tangle Spring is feeling sassy today. Oh my. I wonder what that means for her opportunity as mediator. Huh. She was talking to Time Fawn earlier, and you guys, she loves Time Fawn. So I wonder, maybe she would try to patch things, or not patch things up, but just kind of like console Autumn Fur and Time Fawn I, uh, by being mediator between them. I could see her doing that today to try to to help out, <sighs> to help them out with with their loss. Oh, Tangle Spring. All right. So yeah, we'll probably have her mediate for those two. Autumn Fur is craving the taste of Vol and currently in the Medicine Cat Den. She is a mediator right now. Why are you in the Medicine Cat Den? Her and Sick Cat's Moon Tuft out of Den. Oh, wait. Oh, because she's grieving. Oh, she's grief stricken. Oh, no. Oh, 
<laughs> she's so grief stricken that she can't leave the medicine cat den. Oh, that's so tragic. Oh my gosh. Well, we're actually going to have Autumn Fur here currently be a mediator because her kit is still a kitten. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. I didn't know that would go that high. <clears throat> so friends, this is the fallout from Prance Tail and Bloom Coral's unintentional actions to the kits. You can see Autumn Fur hates Prance Tail now. I don't know. She doesn't like her at all. She doesn't respect her. She doesn't feel comfortable. She doesn't trust her at all. She completely doesn't trust Bloom Coral and dislikes him a lot. I left the tiny, tiny bit of platonic like there after I took out, I rolled some dice to see how much to take out for everything. For Prance Tail, it wiped it clean. For Bloom Coral, her respect, comfort, and like for Bloom Coral was really high, and now it's almost completely gone. But Omfer does hate Prancetail now, and Prancetail basically has no idea. So, yeah, I don't know how that might play out in the future, but I have a feeling how much cats like or dislike each other is going to have a big effect on the random generators we're going to be creating in the future to really move things along. Maybe like putting little boosters on the poor snail going backwards, but still. <laughs> Also, you can see that Autumn Fur absolutely loves her daughter Plumkit, and she is in platonic love out of everybody she knows. She actually cares about Plumkit the most, especially since our troublesome little Plumkit is the only kit that she has left. And Plumkit, meanwhile, Plumkit really, really loves her quote unquote mother and father. And to be fair, I mean, they are good adoptive parents. Just, you know, a little fib here, a little fib there. But Plumkit has been told by her mother such scary things about how bad Prance Tail and Bloom Coral are that she doesn't really know them at all since she's just a young kitten, but she already is a little scared of them. She doesn't trust them and she dislikes them just a tiny bit because her mother makes her feel like she should be scared of them. So that that is definitely a fun development in terms of roleplay. Uh, but Autumn Fur as a mediator is actually going to go ahead and try to help Plumkit build up her relationships in the clan and start to get to know other cats more. And I think that that's actually a really great way to use the queens so that they can try to like integrate their kit into the clan and give them a little bit of an establishment, a little bit of um, like a place before they become paws that might help sort of push things along for being able to have a good mentor and a, a healthy start to the politics of clan life. So that's going to be pretty fun. Um, goodness gracious. Oh, yeah, hang in there, Autumn Fur. Time Fawn, also grief-stricken, caught the scent of an enemy warrior earlier. Ooh, okay. So he might have to go ahead. Yeah, Autumn Fur is grieving so hard she can't work. But actually, it looks like her mate, like Time Fawn, it looks like he can actually still go out. Wow. He's going to push himself through it because he's worried about an enemy warrior. Got it. Bloom Coral. <sighs> Bloom Coral. Chasing his own tail and making others laugh. I have a feeling maybe he's showing off a little bit for Moon Tuft. And I, I don't know. I honestly don't know where Moon Tuft's future in this clan is going to go. So we're going to have to see. Speaking of Moon Tuft... That bite wound has been hurt, has been so bad for three moons he hasn't been able to work. But he is a very smart, strange cat. And he's assigned a Dawn Patrol tomorrow. Well, he can't go anywhere, but maybe he'll go ahead and see off Dawn Patrol. He seems to be taking a lot of interest in especially the younger cats. And also in how the patrols work for the clan. So far, I honest, honest, honestly don't know anything other than the fact that he's pretty ambitious, and we'll have to see where he and our random generators take us with him in the future. Honeywing purrs contentedly at the thought of their clanmates being happy. Oh, Honeywing. I really think that she's purring because she's so in love with her daughter. Like, almost to the point where I'm like, are you a helicopter parent? <laughs> Because she loves and she relies on Primrose Paw. And I feel like that's a little strong for one poor, like, apprentice who might need a chance to go ahead and establish herself in her own life. Um, but Primrose Paw loves her mother and trusts her a lot. She just barely got to know Eddie Leaf. And actually, I did add in that she does know Plumkit. She's compassionate and Plumkit is lonely in the nursery. And I think Primrose Paw would feel really bad for her that she lost her sister. So she does, eh, 
she feels comfortable around the tiny kit, even though, you know, they were annoying and teased her when they were younger. That plum kit, uh, pepper kit, that is, teased Primrose Paw. And then plum kit, uh, well, little plum kit. Yeah, she, she does like Primrose Paw just a little bit. She's a little jealous because Primrose Paw is older. She respects her just a teensy bit and she likes her just a teensy bit. So I thought that would be fun to kind of add in. Oh, Plum Kit is planning on being naughty. She is troublesome. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens there. Let's see. And then where did we leave off? Autumn Fur, Bloom Coral, Moon to Fly. The Heart in the Medicine Den. I do not think that they are very happy about this. Uh, Via Heart, by the way, has indeed gained a little bit of respect for Moontuft. In fact, we can pop over to him just so I can show you guys. He has, um, somewhat, he, he's been working with some of the younger cats. He kind of likes Fluntuft, Prance Tail. He feels pretty comfortable around her, actually. I didn't even do that. Via Heart, he's been trying to kind of warm up to. He's a teensy bit jealous of Poundsbush, as you can see. And he's been trying to warm up just a teensy bit to Eddie Leaf. So that's kind of what he's been up to. Yeah, Moontuff, let's see, okay, Via Heart, Prance Tail, staring off into the distance. I actually think that she's feeling a lot of hurt and confusion over people, or at least Autumn Fur and a couple others, blaming her for the death of a kit. I think that's kind of making her slow down, and you know, she's 24 moons old now, and maybe she's starting to think about her responsibilities to the clan, and how would she feel if that had been her kit? I think this is the first time something like that has ever occurred to her, and it's going to be interesting to see if she decides to move forward on her romantic relationships, if it's going to be with Poundsbush, the deputy who has a desperate crush on her, or with Bloom Coral, who has been her best friend and she his since they were young kids. Hmm, we'll have to see. Blood Tuft runs out of the den headfirst into battle, only to find out it was just a storm. That's freaking adorable. Blood Tuft is actually becoming one of my favorites. Not only has both halves of his, have both halves of his name been stolen from him <laughs> by Floodford and Moon Tuft, but also he is actually liked by a ton of the members of the clan. And it seems like he's going around. And even though he's kind of bold and he can get into a little bit of trouble, and he had that he has that love hate slight like relationship with Eddie Leaf, who was also an apprentice when he was, he is reliable and he is establishing himself. And because of that, it's going to be really interesting to see if he will maintain his deep respect and his like of Pouncebush. Or if, um, yeah, it doesn't look like, all right, yeah, it doesn't even look like uh, Moontuft rolled high enough to get his attention. That's interesting. Eddie Leaf is chattering at the birds in the trees above. <sighs> I think she's just, she's just thinking it's, it's been a lot lately. It's been a lot. Primrose Paw fell into the nearby creek yesterday and is still feeling damp. Oh, hang in there, Primrose Paw. Okay, so that's how the whole clan is right now. And holy moly, yeah, I know I threw a lot at you guys and we haven't even gotten to the, the Lost Kits. Dang it, maybe we'll do Lost Kits next time because this is just a ton to go ahead and update about. But let's go ahead and let's mediate, do our patrols, and see our events for next time. Tangle Spring. Feeling a little bit sassy, I do think she would be worried about her friend Time Fawn and his mate. It's so tragic to you to like lose a young kit, so let's go ahead and let her mediate. Oh, oh, this is adorable. So now Autumn Fur feels really secure with Time Fawn. Oh my gosh, is that really how it looks? Because that's adorable. Autumn Fur. Oh, okay, she really does not like Prancedale. Um, okay, well, hang on. So Time Fawn. Oh, he feels really secure and really respects and really likes his mate. Oh, and right now she doesn't really like her mate that much, but she trusts him a lot. So maybe we'll be able to build something up there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and, oh, actually I needed to work with Autumn Fur. And so Autumn Fur, as I said, is going to be mediator for her daughter Plum Kit to try to help her get to know some of the other cats of the clan a little bit better. Maybe play with Primrose Paw. Um, let's see, definitely not go near. She would try to sabotage everything with Prance Tail for sure. Uh, we're not going to allow any romantic because you're just a baby. Uh, she Autumn Fur doesn't really like Honeywing. Let's see, this is a good chance for the bias of a parent cat to go ahead and have quite the bit of influence on the politics of the whole clan because Han Fur is going to say nope I like she can sabotage relationships before Plum Kit even gets out of the nursery this way 
So that's going to be one of my like personal like in-house policies is the queens or whoever has adopted the cat, uh, the kittens, or is taking care of them, is they can be mediators and they can affect their kit's relationship because I think that would be quite interesting. I wonder if you can switch between mediating and also going on patrol. Ooh, I'm gonna have to think about that. <laughs> that might really help for roleplay purposes. Um, but see, Autumn Fur. Oh man, who is Autumn Fur's like best friend again? Let's see relationships. She really likes Eddie Leaf and Flood Tuft, and that's about it. You know what? Maybe she would have her kit go ahead and try meeting with. Oh my god, Autumn Fur, get back over here. Okay, hold still. Now, actually, Autumn Fur, who are you closest to right now? Dang it, Autumn Fur, you ran away. <laughs> Never mind. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to have her mediate between Plum Kit and Eddie Leaf, just to go ahead and try to try to make friends. Uh oh, can they? Can they? Can they not? Can they? Oh, she isn't able to work. Oh, no. <laughs> She's grieving too much. Oh, that's so sad. Gosh darn it. Well, all right, let's go ahead and we're going to go on patrol. I'm actually going to send the grieving time fawn and his apprentice Primrose Paw out first because there is the scent of an enemy warrior somewhere along the border. I think that he'll go with Pounce Bush as well. Hmm, actually, who is a good... Fighter. The best fighter is Bloom Coral, but I don't think that Time Fawn feels super comfortable around Bloom Coral right now. So you know what? Let's go ahead and see if Via Heart wants to get out of Medicine Cat Den and go on a border patrol. While while walking along the border, your patrol notice a, notices a oh my gosh a Brack and Clan patrol renewing their scent marks up ahead. Okay, we're gonna have to go ahead and proceed because there's no way that the strict Via Heart would ignore this. The patrol eventually cross paths and an awkward tension fills the air. No one is quite sure what to say to break the silence. Eventually, everyone involved slowly shuffles away to continue their respective patrols. <laughs> okay, that wasn't as dramatic as I was expecting. Um, and then let's see, who else? Who wanted, Flood Tuft wanted to, or Flood Fern, pardon me, um, wanted to know Honeywing a little bit better. So maybe we'll invite her out on a medicine, like a uh, medicine collecting patrol. During a patrol looking for herbs, Floodfern notices that Honeywing seems to be more quiet than usual. When prompted, Honeywing slowly asks if Floodfern could teach them more about the nature of Star Clan. <gasps> That's so precious! I wonder if she's really trying, or maybe, ah, maybe it's a little sad because hearing how Pepper Kit was Star is with Star Clan now, I wonder if it would make Honeywing feel like, what is Star Clan? And now she's getting to know about a whole new thing. Bloodfern eventually relents and begins teaching Honeywing more about StarClan and the nature of prophecies. Expecting boredom, Bloodfern was shocked when, uh, when they saw the wonder in Honeywing's face. The two spend the rest of the patrol pondering the nature of their ancestors together. Oh, that's really cool! I wonder, did that help at all with like their relationship? Because that's kind of the thing I care about most. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then where's Bloodfern? Eh. Oh geez, <laughs> I keep forgetting how much she loves her daughter. It's kind of intense. Uh, yeah, yeah, help the relationship just a teensy bit. All right, uh, okay, I gotta hurry. We've been going on for way too long already. Hmm, let's see. Pounce Bush. Hmm. So would it be, oh, I guess Moontuft is already, oh, Moontuft can't work this time. Oh, so that means that Chestnut Star might be going out with Pounce Bush all on that border patrol that we'll have to do next time. Hmm. I see. But yeah, I could see Pounce Bush actually wanting, knowing that Chestnut Star is going to check out that cabin, would choose to secure his position as deputy and go with her, which means, of course, that Bloom Coral, with, um, with a certain prance tail, might go ahead and slip away with Eddie Leaf, currently distracted. Oh, that actually pairs out. I didn't even plan that, but that leaves Flood Tuft with her. But uh, he might go ahead and he might head out to just kind of go on a, maybe a training patrol. Yeah, just to just to stretch their legs uh, and just see how things go. Prance Tail suggests that this might be a good chance to practice new fighting techniques with Bloom Coral. Both cats have a nice practice session, swapping their best tips and tricks with each other. Oh, did that do anything? Did that do anything? See your relationships. No, not really. <laughs> We'll have to go ahead and wait and see. Uh, all right, and finally, that leaves a surprised Eddie Leaf, who's, you know, her her mentor actually headed out without her, uh, left with Flood Tough to go ahead and do some hunting today. It starts snowing soon after the patrol sets out, trying to bring back something, anything for the fresh kill pile. Hmm. 
Being older, Flood Tuft would definitely, like, insist they keep going. The prey must be hiding. The patrol catches nothing. As a snowstorm descends and their visibility drops, the patrol clumps together under a bush, their pelts and tails and legs all tightly wrapped into one indistinguishable kitty cat ball. Oh. Take with that what you will, friends. I didn't just have sparkles in my eyes thinking that would make amazing fan art. Not me. <laughs> Not the Siri. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was pretty adorable. That was pretty adorable. I'm gonna have to see if that did anything to like, to either boost romantic or made them fight because, you know, they didn't find anything. I really need to work on a relationship random generator. <sighs> but speaking of random generators, <clears throat> well, friends, the one thing I didn't show you is that we do indeed have a generator called the Fate of the Abandoned ca uh, Cabin Kits. And I think we're going to have to go ahead and dive into that next time because we're going to see whether or not any of the kits survived and if Chestnut Star might actually be able to go ahead and invite them into her life. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to ignore, by the way, the fact that the kits have been there for several moons. Cough, cough. Uh, and if you guys would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures that probably are just as silly. Well, you guys know where to find us. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!